such thing as coming out or being out. The very idea of being out, it was ludicrous. You know, people talk about being in and out now. There was no out. There was just in. In society today, there is a general acceptance for homosexuals. Same-sex marriage is legal in 11 countries, and gay pride parades are highly anticipated and held annually in the summer worldwide. How did society ever get to this point, when only 40 years ago, homosexuality was considered a mental illness? After the raid at the Stonewall Inn on July 28, 1969, and the riots following the raid, huge amounts of gays began to come together for the first time. The Stonewall Riots was a turning point for Western gay liberation and is the reason homosexuals are generally accepted in society today. And if we catch you involved with a homosexual, your parents are going to know about it first. And you will be caught. Don't think you won't be caught. Because this is one thing you cannot get away with. This is one thing that if you don't get caught by us, you'll be caught by yourself and the rest of your life will be a living hell. Before the Stonewall Riots, homosexuals were seen as mentally ill, immoral beings that knew not to tell their homosexuality to anyone. Homosexuals were thought to be the main culprits of child molestation, and to be found out usually resulted in imprisonment, loss of job, family, friends, sometimes suicide, and to be sent to an institution to try to be cured. Institutions attempted to cure homosexuals by showing gay males pornography while giving them electric shocks, conducting procedures or surgeries, and giving gays a drug that gives the same feeling as drowning. As a result of this, many gays turned into walking vegetables. In rural areas, there was no way to be gay and not have everyone find out, which is why many homosexuals came to big, anonymous cities like New York. And I got to the corner of 6th Avenue and 8th Street, crossed the street, and there I had found Nirvana. There was all these drag queens and these crazy people, and everybody was carrying on. I made friends that first day. There was one street called Christopher Street, where actually I could sit and talk to other gay people beyond just having sex. The Madison Society was the first gay organization started in 1950 by an English-born American labor advocate, Harry Hay. They met in a place with the blinds literally drawn, afraid the FBI was after them. The Madison Society aimed to get the straight public to see homosexuals as actual people. They began to draw the Constitution and use techniques similar to the ones used during the Civil Rights Movement. They also created the word homophile to use instead of homosexual to put an emphasis on love rather than sex to give gay people a different public image. In the 1960s, gay bars were the place to go for homosexuals, and the Stonewall Inn was the most popular gay bar in Greenwich Village and acted as a refuge from the harassment of everyday society for gays. Like most gay bars during this time, it was controlled by the Mafia and illegally served liquor without a liquor license. The Mafia owned the jukeboxes, they owned the cigarette machines, and most of the liquor was off a of truck hijacking. It was impossible for the club to make so much money unnoticed, interesting the police highly. Although raids at Stonewall were almost routine, the night of July 28, 1969 was different. At 1.20 a.m., the peak of the merriment, the police raided Stonewall and something unexpected happened. Gays fought back. Really unusual raid. Going in there in the middle of the night with a full crowd, the mafia hasn't been alerted, the 6th precinct hasn't been alerted. A rather tough lesbian was busted in the bar, but when she came out of the bar, she was fighting the cops and was trying to get away. And the harder she fought, the more the cops were beating her up, and the madder the crowd got. And as I'm looking around to see what's going on, police cars, different things happening, it's getting bigger by the minute. And some people came out and being very dramatic, throwing their arms up in a V, you know, as the victory sign. Things started off small, but there was an energy that began to flow through the crowd. People were screaming, okay, copper. People started throwing pennies. And then everybody started to throw pennies. Like, you know, like they were, this is what they were, nothing but copper. You know, coppers. Now, that's what they were worth. We had uh, maybe six people, and by this time, there were several thousand outside. Call them names, tell them how good looking they were, grabbing their butts, doing things like that, you know, just making their lives miserable for once. 
for the first time, we weren't letting ourselves be carted off to jails. Gay people were actually fighting back just the way people in the peace movement fought back. It was thrilling. It was the only time I was in a gladiatorial sport that you know, I, I, I stood up in. I was proud. I was a man. The riot that night changed everything. It was the first time gays had ever stood up for themselves. And the next night, people came back to riot outside of Stonewall and several nights after that, continuing the riots for five days, causing many to finally come out of the closet and fight for their rights. When it was clear that things were definitely over for the evening, we decided we needed to do something more. We knew that this was a moment that we didn't want to let slip past because it was something that we could use to bring more of the groups together. After Stonewall, what was called the New Homosexual was born. Activists saw this as a time to take action and form organizations like the Gay Liberation Front, which was the first organization to use gay in its title. This group wanted to align themselves with the Black Panther, civil rights, and anti-Vietnam groups. Gay Liberation Front meetings became chaotic, and many people began to disagree with them. Therefore, moderate liberation split off to form the Gay Activist Alliance, aiming to seek basic rights for homosexuals. This group had a firehouse in Manhattan that became the headquarters for gay movement in New York. Dances were held in the firehouse that were told to change people's lives and had at least a couple thousand people on Saturday nights. The first gay pride march was held on June 28, 1970, the anniversary of Stonewall called Christopher Street Liberation Day, also known today as gay pride parades. The march started with about 100 people, but kept growing as they marched up 6th Avenue. And I looked back, and there were about 2,000 people behind us, and that's when I knew it had happened. I say I can't, cannot tell this without tearing up. And Peter and I walked the rest of the whole thing with tears running down our face. In 1973, a huge accomplishment was made when Robert Spitzer concluded that homosexuality did not meet the requirements of a psychiatric disorder. Therefore, homosexuality was no longer considered a mental illness. Homosexuality started to play a part and make achievements in politics due to influential people such as Harvey Milk. Harvey Milk was the first admittedly gay person to become a state representative and made national headlines when he was elected city supervisor of San Francisco in 1977. At least half of homosexuals, including Milk, had moved to San Francisco between 1969 and 1977 with assertiveness from the Stonewall riots. He encouraged all homosexuals to step out of the closet and organized the Castro Valley Association, the gay community's first independent source of political power. And then, when Harvey Milk was murdered at the peak of his popularity, people only followed his words even more. As the 1970s ended, the gay community was making massive progress, even when faced with overwhelming obstacles. When the outbreak of AIDS hit the gay community, many were shocked and afraid, especially afraid it ruined the community. However, the spread of AIDS caused the whole gay community to come out in a way. No healthcare would help until gay doctors stepped in and built organizations to help support. After Congress member Stuart McKinley died from AIDS, other people in Congress began to come out as well. The community grew and kept growing. People began to come together more in San Francisco, forming AIDS marches and riots. AIDS forced the gay and lesbian movement to nationalize, institutionalize, and aggressively pursue the mainstream. Since then, homosexuality has made massive accomplishments to becoming the mainstream. Gay pride parades are held annually around the world in July to celebrate the night of the raid at Stonewall, which changed everything. And all of us are created equal. It is the star that guides us still. Just as it guided our forebears through Seneca Falls and Selma and Stonewall. The Stonewall riots brought attention to the public about the problems with gay mistreatment and equality in society and how they were not going to take it anymore. Stonewall kindled the nation's gay right movement and is still ever-present in society today. With same-sex marriage now legal in this state, we have achieved things we never thought we could thanks to Stonewall.